Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Transit Action Alliance of Guelph. Uh, we are doing a series of webinars, and this first one, uh, under the name of Learn About Transit, um, this first webinar tonight is about on-demand transit, the Belleville experience. So first, I wanted to introduce who we are. The Transit Action Alliance of Guelph is a broad-based nonprofit community organization which works cooperatively to promote better transportation. We're advocating for accessible, affordable, and frequent transit. Our goals are to educate, motivate, advocate, and activate the community on transit. Tonight, we're hoping to educate the community in hopes that they will be activated to advocate for improvements to on-demand transit in Guelph and transit in general. We do sell memberships and we invite anybody who's watching this to join TAG and help us in our efforts for better transit in Guelph and area. For individuals, it's $10. For students and seniors, it's $5. For community groups and nonprofits, it's $25. And for corporations and unions, it's $100. We also have a pay what you can option on our website. If you go to www.taaguelph.com, that's tagguelph.com slash membership, you can find all the details. If you'd like to donate tonight for, for, for watching this and help us in our advocacy, you can also go to tagguelph.com slash donate and donate uh, some funds to help us do more of these. You can follow us online on Facebook, on Twitter at Tag Guelph. Our website is tagguelph.com. We are on Facebook and we are working on a playlist on Spotify called Bus to Move, which we think is a neat little idea. So we hope you would join us in creating a public transit system where fares are fair, frequency provides freedom, and no let riders left behind. So as for tonight's uh, Learn About Transit event, it is on-demand transit, Belleville experience uh, in Belleville, Ontario. And our guest speaker tonight is Paul Buck, Manager of Transit Operations for Belleville Transit. Paul has more than 20 years experience in transit operations in both the municipal and private sector. He has worked on many transit projects, including bus rapid transit launches, mobile fare payment, new facilities startups, and CAD EVL launches. In September 2018, Bevel Transit teamed up with Pantanonium Inc. to launch a conventional transit on demand program that has gone on to be a resounding success. In November 2019, Bevel Transit and this group were awarded the Canadian Urban Transit Association, CUDA, Corporate Leadership Award for Innovation and Transit for their on-demand project. So without further ado, here's Paul. Excellent. <clears throat> And thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty great to be here today. I want to thank the uh, the tag organization for inviting me and allowing me to to share the experience that we've had in Belleville with uh, with on domain transit. It has been quite the project. We've uh, we've done things with on demand transit, and and the the public response to on demand transit was is far better than than we've ever anticipated. Uh, it uh, it's really been been pretty great. So to jump into Belleville Transit. Yeah, well, there we are. Uh, a little bit about Belleville. Uh, our service area population is uh, just over 50,000 people. Uh, we cover a service area size of just over 247 square kilometers. And we travel just over a million miles a year uh, providing transit service in Belleville. Now, these numbers are gonna be slightly lower uh, for, 20, um, for 2020 uh, than this, uh, but we're still trying to compile all of our, uh, our information for last year after the, uh, the COVID pandemic. We did, however, still offer um, full 
hours of uh, operating service. So it's not going to be that much lower than that. So we're still uh, still with the 50,000 uh, total service hours in the year as well. Now, physically, uh, we're located on the north shore of Lake Ontario on the Bay of Quinte, just about halfway between Toronto and Ottawa uh, along the 401 corridor, it's slightly closer to, to Toronto than we are Ottawa. Uh, we offer uh, nine fixed bus routes on a daytime scheduled service, and our nighttime service is, uh, is on demand or ODT service. Our fleet consists of 16 conventional transit buses, all 40 foot low floor Novas. We have three specialized transit vehicles or, or paratransit vehicles for door to door service. We have 34 drivers, two supervisors, three mechanics, one customer service person, and we recently just added two dispatchers. Uh, the dispatchers are more for our specialized transit than it is for our conventional, uh, but they, they share that duty. In 2019, we carried just over 1.1 million passengers. And last year, in 2020, we carried uh, about uh, 680,000 passengers. Uh, down a little bit, of course, because of COVID. So our late night bus service, uh, prior to January 2018, we didn't have a late night service. Um, our regular service ended at 9 p.m. on weekdays. It ended at uh, 7.30 p.m. Saturdays and 6 p.m. on Sundays. Where we started to look at late night bus service was uh, the demand we were getting from our um, our northeast industrial park area. Uh, we had some pretty we have uh, some pretty large um, companies up there, including uh, Kellogg's, Procter and Gamble, and Magna, and they were having difficulty with staff trying to get to work after our service ended. Uh, the only way they could get there is if they rode a bus and got there hours early, or took a taxi, or depended on their own personal vehicle. And that just wasn't being effective for them. You know, they were having difficulty getting staff that were able to work the hours and, and still be there on time. So they approached the economic development uh, manager in Belleville, who approached. There we go. So we started doing some background checks. We did uh, some public uh, uh, public visits. We went to some of the larger employers in the industrial park and got an idea of what their work hours were and, and what they would need for a service to get their people to and from work. And then started to design a, a fixed route service that we could uh, get some late night service going. So what we ended up coming up with was a one hour fixed route that circled the city, uh, providing services on an hourly basis, used two buses so we could get a 30 minute loop. Um, and it was a flex route so that if you phone through the day between 8.30 a.m. and 4.30 in the afternoon and request it, that bus could flex off the route to pick somebody up at another stop. The difficulty with that is um, we could sometimes flex off the route but not get back onto the regular route. We'd miss stops or it would put us behind. And more often than not, it did both. Um, and it just it wasn't, uh, wasn't an effective service. Uh, it was taking too long for people to get home. And it uh, it just was not uh, user friendly at all. And our average ridership was between 35 and 45 people a night, usually about 46 people a night. So at the same time, this was the uh, this was the actual route that we uh, that we launched. Um, and you can see that uh, large. Um, large route. We thought we had good coverage, but uh, just wait for a couple of slides and I'll show you how wrong we were. Uh, and, and what we designed was what we heard from our public input sessions and from the employers in the industrial park of where people were living um, and the best route we could get them to and from work. Uh, this route was predominantly just designed as a, a worker bus really for, for the shift work in the industrial park. So at the same time as we launched this service uh, in January 2018, we were also, uh, at this time, we were approached by QTRIC, um, which is the, the Canadian Urban Transit Research and Innovation Consortium. And they uh, predominantly put technology projects together with transit agencies who don't have the expertise or the time um, to, to develop things like, the, like that on their own. Future came to us and said that they had a project for a completely automated on-demand scheduling service developed by Pantonium in, uh, in Toronto. 
And what this service was going to do for us was allow us to run an on-demand service that was uh, completely automated and wouldn't require uh, human input at all other than to set the service up in, in the early part of the evening. Now, Double Transit is, is fairly forward thinking and we've been uh, lucky in that our Transit Council uh, our, our city council and our transit advisory committee uh, are very committed to transit. They, they recognize the importance of transit to uh, the public as an economic development option, uh, public education, and, and just to, to move the move the, uh, the residents of Belleville and area around. So they said to us, um, absolutely, um, take a look at it. If, if we can improve our service and, and, and possibly make it more efficient, and then have a look. So over the course of eight months, um, Belleville Transit worked with Pantonium to help develop the late night service for, uh, for the on-demand software. And it took us a little longer, it took us the eight months because at the time um, it was a concept. Uh, there, there wasn't an actual product yet. It was, it was an excellent idea. They had an incredible algorithm. Uh, they just needed a, a transit partner to work with to, to flesh it out and make it work. And Belleville Transit was, uh, was able to do that with them. So on September 17th, 2018, Bevel Transit and Pantonium launched the BT Let's Go on-demand service for the residents of Belleville. Now, our thoughts initially were when we launched the, the, this late night service was that we would be able to just run the bus to get our 46 driver riders home. Uh, then we wouldn't be driving that big long hour route. Um, we would get everybody home quicker. We'd use less fuel. There'd be less wear and tear. And, and the service would grow. Now, to the credit to uh, the, the folks at Pantonium, they kept telling us right at the launch date that, that this is going to be busy, it's going to be huge. And, and as advanced as I thought we were, or as progressive as I thought we were, I still had that transit mentality that uh, we're going to launch slow and we'll build it over time. We'll talk to the residents, we'll educate, we'll train, and we'll build the service over time. And we always do with a, with a new launch transit service because nobody ever jumps on it right away because they, they want to make sure that it's going to work and see how it fits for them. Uh, luckily for us, that didn't happen in Belleville. Right from the very first day we launched uh, our public come out to ride. Uh, they had been waiting for something like this for a long time. It fit into what they wanted to do and they immediately showed us how important it was to them. In the first 24 hours, we had over 200 registered riders for the service. Our ridership increased by over 500 trips in the first two weeks that we launched, and the riders just kept coming. And, and happily, I can say that it wasn't just the transit or the, uh, the industrial park employees that we wanted to get back and forth to work. It was everybody. We had uh, students from Loyalist College that were riding the bus that needed to get it around in the evening. We had high school students with part-time jobs that needed to get back home after, after work in the evening. Um, residents attending sporting events at the Sports and Wellness Center, going to the show, going shopping, just out to visit friends. It, uh, it, just, it just kept growing um, exponentially. It was fantastic. But what is on-demand transit? Uh, I've always said that on-demand transit is a, it's a positive change in how transit's planned, scheduled, delivered, and used. It's a huge change to how the industry and passengers use transit or have used transit historically. Because public transit um, has had very little change in the last 50 years. If you take a look at the service that your city runs or, or a city near you runs, you look at the schedules that they're running today, go back 10 years and look at the schedule and the routes, go back another 10 years and look at the schedules and the routes. Undoubtedly, you'll see some minor change in, the, in growth in some of our areas and some of our cities, but you're gonna see the same routes uh, that have been there literally for decades on almost identical schedules um, and people um, are just uh, they're using transit because it's there it's just the way it's always been there hasn't been a lot of change there hasn't been a lot of growth and we've always asked ourselves why and it's because what have we done to make it better for people to, to use public transit that's the traditional way sorry Paul yep the uh, the slides seem to have stopped and stuck. Uh, on, we're still uh, on what's on demand transit. We're okay. Uh, late night bus service. Oh. Yeah, it's... P 
people only see your paused screen. Well, that's not right. How do I unpause? It says I am paused, but I have no idea how that happened. Derek, we back now? Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, so, okay, now um, with on-demand transit, uh, with new technology, um, public transit doesn't have to be the way it's always been, uh, with, the, with the same routes and the same schedule and the same stops. Uh, with on-demand transit, Pantone has been able to, for Belleville, create a, a significant shift and change in how transit gets delivered. By providing service on demand, you know, we give the passengers the ability to request buses when they want them, where they want them, going to their destination without having to travel a fixed route. Um, and passengers are realizing very quickly how convenient that is. Um, for the operational side, with combination of some minor operational changes, uh, the use of artificial intelligence on demand has allowed us to increase the quality of service to our riders. We're reducing ride time, we're increasing the service area that we can cover, and instead of buses following a fixed route, uh, the technology creates journeys based on the passenger demand and will only dispatch a bus to a stop that's requested by a customer. So it, it doesn't have to drive around in that big fixed route loop hoping somebody's there. With on demand, the bus is only going to go where it's needed, when it's needed to pick somebody up. After three months of operating on-demand service in Belleville, our ridership per vehicle went from six passengers per hour per hour to over 30 passengers per hour. Using the same equipment, using our existing infrastructure, and without any human dispatching. Using what we have, operating the schedule that we were previously operating, we were able to increase from six passengers an hour to 30 ridership. And I always like to say that what we needed from Pantonium was something unique, uh, because we are uh, here in Belleville, we were unique just like everybody else. Um, but with, with our operation, we needed a system um, that could run autonomously, because I didn't have anybody in the office after 5.30 at night. So when the service was on the road, it had to run um, uh, human interaction free. So what this system does is rather than using dispatchers to build and change plans, the technology works in real time between the bus operator, the customer, and utilizing technology to, to reschedule trips in a real time basis. The system monitors the locations of the vehicles and, and where the passenger demand is. And whenever something changes that's gonna impact the plan, the system automatically and autonomously triggers several thousand iterations of planning. So every single time there's a booking or a cancellation or a passenger gets off the bus or on the bus, the system takes every single trip that is, that is in the system and tries to reschedule to make it efficient. It doesn't leave a hole in the schedule. If a passenger cancels, immediately the service will automatically try to look and find a way to fill that hole to make sure that bus is running as efficiently as possible. It won't let it run around empty if there's an option for it to put a customer in that seat uh, and keep the revenue generation uh, going so that your revenue hours are almost constant. It's constantly striving to improve efficiency. This slide has been excellent at showing how convenient fixed uh, on-demand service is versus a fixed route service. So this is a real life scenario here in Belleville. Um, for, for background, let's, uh, let's say you have a child comes home from school, does a usual after school thing, has dinner, 
And then says, oh, yeah, by the way, I've got a, a class assignment that's due tomorrow, and I have no materials to do it. I have to get up to Staples to get some stuff. So you, you take a look at, the, at this route, at this comparison. What we're looking at is a, a residence in the southeast part of Belleville, uh, East Hill, nice area of town. And we have to get up to the um, Staples store on the, the north end of town in the, uh, in the shopping area. So we're, we're going to take the bus from Bridge and Albert Street or in Belleville to Bell Boulevard, uh, the Staples store and back. So with our fixed rate service, the first thing you got to do is pull out your schedule or go online, try to figure out what time the bus comes, um, what route it's going to take, and how you get from where you are to where you want to go. So you find out when the bus is going to come. On average, um, if you're like me, you're going to miss the bus because it just went by. So you got to wait for that cycle to come back around again. So we'll say it's 25 minutes that you wait for the bus to show up. You go out and you get on the bus. Now it's a 25 minute trip with a five minute layover at the terminal. So you, now you've got a 25 minute ride as you ride the whole loop around the, the eastern part of Belleville and back downtown. In downtown, you transfer over to the next bus. It's a 20 minute ride from downtown up to the Staples store. You jump off the bus, the stop is right outside the Staples store. You go inside, you're there for 15 minutes. You come back out. Now you gotta wait for that fixed route bus to come back around again, which is gonna be about 35 minutes. You get on the bus, now you have to ride that route around the whole loop in the northwest side of Belleville to get back downtown to make the transfer to the home. So it's a 25 minute ride. You get the transfer downtown, you take your five minute bus ride home. And in total, you're two and a half hours, start to finish on, a, on the traditional fixed route system. Now, with on demand, um, you don't need to know the schedule. You don't need to know the route. All you need to do is try to grab your phone um, or uh, your computer. You enter in uh, a pickup ASAP with the on demand service. Our average wait time right now is nine minutes for an on demand bus in Belleville. The bus shows up at your stop nine minutes after you request it. The average ride time in Belleville is approximately 12 minutes. So you jump on the bus, it's a 12 minute ride from where you are in the east part of Belleville up to the north part of Belleville. It may make the occasional stop along the way for passengers getting on and off, but the entire time you're on that vehicle, you're heading towards your destination. You're not riding around a big loop waiting to see who, who may or may not get on. You get up to the store, you go inside, you do your 15 minutes of shopping. As you're waiting in line and to pay for your order, you jump on your app, you request the bus ASAP. Again, average nine minute wait, average is 12 minute ride. Your total trip on demand, 57 minutes, an hour and a half quicker than using a fixed route service. To compare that, if you had your own personal vehicle, it's a 10 minute trip according to, uh, to Google Maps from 163 Bridge at Albert up to the Staples at 190 Bell Boulevard. So you'd be 10, 20, 35 minutes uh, with your own vehicle. 35 minutes with your own vehicle versus 57 minutes with public transit. That uh, and that's that's a pretty easy take. That's a, that's a good option. Absolutely. So where did our on-demand go? Uh, like I said back a, a few slides ago, um, we had this big loop that went around the city that was designed to um, get people to and from work. When we launched our on-demand service, um, where we intended to provide service to, uh, which is the Jameson Moon and University Avenue area, it turned out it was the fourth most popular area for us to go. The first two weren't even on the original fixed route loop. Uh, the Walmart store uh, in the Lions Community Center, which is in East End of Belleville. So our, our fixed route service that we thought had good coverage around the city and, and was providing the service that the, the people needed after regular hours, um, we were wrong. We, we were missing about 75% of where our ridership was going. This shows a, a pretty good graphic of what we were missing. Uh, the map on the left using the blue dots shows the stops that you could access using the Route 11 when it was a, the fixed flex route. The stops on the right map in red um, are the stops that were used by the on-demand service, which makes it a little, little more obvious that 75% uh, of our ridership wasn't getting access to service using a fixed route. 
by opening up the on-demand, um, it, it gave the public more options, more convenience, and they, they jumped on the bus uh, and utilized it. To make it even more um, eye-catching, uh, this is a, a heat map uh, of where our passengers are with on-demand service. Now, that the, the more red an area is or the hotter an area looks, uh, the more demand it's in that area. Now, if you were to overlay the Route 11 map fixed rate that we had before that I showed you, it kind of traveled around the outside, all of those, uh, the cool blue areas, the hot red spots right out the center of the city of Belleville and, and kind of slightly left and right of that, we barely serviced at all with the fixed rate service. We weren't going where we needed to go. And as soon as we put the power of, of ridership in the hands of the riders, uh, they quickly let us know where, where we should have been uh, and, and utilized the service and made it theirs. I was saying before um, how excellent the service was and how quickly our, our public responded and and, uh, and jumped on board the bus. Now, when we launched the service, initially we only had two buses and we did a, a soft launch. So we kept one bus on the fixed route and our second bus on, on demand, assuming that it would take the public a little while to get used to using an app and, and understanding the, the, the significant change in how the service operated. Um, and we were wrong. Uh, they started using it heavily right off the bat it's a service that they were waiting for. It was a service that they wanted and, and they, they showed us that they needed it. But what it resulted into us um, in, our, in our transit thought process was that um, we're not gonna need extra capacity right away because it's gonna take a while to build. But as early as October, literally two weeks after we launched our service, we started running into capacity issues. Um, we had to switch over to two buses fully on demand, got rid of the fixed rating altogether uh, we worked with Pantonium, who were fantastic. The Pantonium product allows a lot of options, um, bus capacity, limiting the number of uh, minutes that the passengers on board a trip, um, extending the hours of service so that you can move your bus around and allow, uh, allow your drivers to accommodate service. Uh, so we use all of those tasks that we could to make it as efficient as possible. And then ultimately, we had to uh, to add more equipment. Uh, right now, uh, we're up to five buses a night uh, to operate our on-demand service. We're meeting capacity. It has decreased our efficiency slightly, but it's opened up a lot of um, space and, and area for, for passengers to, to utilize the service. Now, the best thing about on-demand is that there's no fixed routing. Your customer doesn't know how many buses are on the road. They only know how long they're waiting for a bus. So if you can look ahead to your service and your schedule, uh, you can adjust your, your number of vehicles that you have on the road. Uh, as an operations, you have complete control over your, your, uh, your budget and your costs. The public, the passenger has complete control over their ride and the service that they book. So it's a win-win for both sides. And what's next for uh, on-demand transit for Belleville? Um, the, the recent pandemic uh, and the shutdown showed the incredible efficiency of on-demand service and the, um, the quickness in which you can move and adapt on demand. Uh, when we had uh, in March of, uh, of last year, uh, we ran into same service problems as everybody. Literally overnight, our ridership dropped by 94% quickly realizing uh, we had a lot of um, essential workers in Belleville that needed to get to uh, the food processing work in the Northeast Industrial Park, River Regional Hospital in Belleville, a lot of uh, people that work there ride the service to get back and forth to. Uh, and we have a lot of uh, seniors that need to get out to, to get to groceries and, and make sure that they can get to pharmacies and look out for themselves. So we, we quickly realized that, uh, yes, we were losing our service ridership significantly, but we still needed to be there to, to get our essential employees uh, back and forth to work. And because of the, um, the shifts, uh, we needed to still offer the service from five in the morning till midnight, 
pretty much seven days a week. So started looking at our options and it was readily apparent that on-demand was the way to go. We were able to still offer a full range of service from 5 a.m. to midnight, literally seven days a week. But rather than have a total of 27 buses on the road in a day, we could flip it overnight and run exactly the same number of hours, accommodate everybody using 11 buses. And with the on-demand, it's all scheduled through, through the app. And so you have the ability to cap your number of passengers on board the bus. So the system would only allow you to book as many people on a bus as you permitted it. So that allowed the, the drivers to go out and do their job, pick up the passengers and carry them, and not have that confrontation on the door of the bus when we were at a cap of 10 people and say, uh, oh, sorry, we're at 10, uh, you other five people, you're gonna have to wait till the next bus or we'll figure something else out. With our service, we didn't have that situation because they were pre-booking um, and they only booked for a number of people that we could carry. It also allowed us, some of the passengers were pre-booking the day ahead or up to a week ahead, you could do it, uh, it has that flexibility. You can book on demand immediately or you can book it ahead of time if you know your schedule. So that allowed us to have a look and see what our ridership was going to be like for the next day, what we could anticipate, and then we could adjust our service. We could add uh, or remove buses as needed to make sure we met the demand and not overtax or, or, or spend more than we needed to. Uh, other things we're going to do with On Demand, we are launching into our rural area just north of Belleville. Um, uh, it's, it's our Ward 2. It's a, a lot less densely populated. Uh, and we're looking at offering up a combined door-to-door um, -door service for our specialized or repair transit and a regular stop-to-stop -stop pickup for ambulatory passengers, done all the same community-style bus, do it all on demand. And for anybody that's looking after the, uh, the finance side of things on transit, um, there's also an option in that scenario that if you're an ambulatory passenger and you decide you want the convenience of the door-to-door, there could be a premium fee for that. It's an option to, uh, to increase some revenue that way as well. We're also looking at uh, utilizing on-demand for our early morning services on weekends. We still need to get people back and forth to work, but there, the demand is such that it's going to be easier and quicker for them to use an on-demand service rather than wait for the, the regular service to start up. Ultimately, what we hope to do with, uh, with on-demand service in Belleville is we know we have corridors that have uh, regular ridership that will demand and on uh, demand a scheduled service on regular routing. Okay, for example, to our college when it goes back um, to our shopping district, uh, to the Walmart, obviously, um, but all our other communities, you know, we can operate with an on-demand service, doing a combined mobility um, as well as conventional and then bring all those residents out to the hub to transfer to the fixed route service and carry on their way. Uh, it allows us to cover more ground, fewer equipment, and a lot more convenient for the customer because again, they're not waiting for a bus on our schedule, they get to pick it on their own. There are a number, a number of uses for, for on-demand transit in, in almost every single service I've looked at. I've not seen uh, an opportunity um, or an operation that there wasn't an opportunity to use on demand. So what I get asked a lot, uh, how much more is on demand to operate over regular conventional transit? Uh, very little, um, because again, as the operator, you have full control over how much service you provide, how many buses you utilize, and the hours of operation that you run. Um, we have um, a license for five vehicles in Belleville, um, and it's adaptable, and depending on the size of the service you want to operate, the number of customers that you utilize, you license for, for what your service needs or what your service finds. Um, uh, Equipment-wise, um, capital-wise to, to start up on demand for our service is a tablet for each bus. We use uh, Samsung Galaxy tablets with, uh, with LTE data. That's what gets tracked for the GPS system. That is what the, the service utilizes to track your vehicles and track your ridership. There's nothing that gets installed on the bus other than the, the bracket to hold the, uh, the tablet. Uh, and the, the program itself is web-based, so there's nothing to purchase or buy or add to your operation other than the tablets. 
how will it work for us? We're too big, we're too small, we're too different. Uh, again, uh, I've never seen an operation that on demand didn't have a, a, a space that it could be utilized. Uh, even your, your larger services that feed um, commuters into, uh, into a GO station. Early morning service, you can run on demand when ridership demand is lower. As you come into your peak, um, AM peak, you switch that bus from on demand over to your conventional service, running your, your fixed rates and schedules. You get through your AM peak, you have that midday lull, you go back to on demand again, into your afternoon peak, back onto your fixed rate schedule, and then in your evening back to on demand again. Um, your, your lower dense, the densely populated areas, you could run on demand on a regular basis. There's always a gap that on demand can, can achieve or, or to fill. And, and the biggest one we always got after we first launched, are your numbers for real? Uh, absolutely. Uh, when, when you see a 300% increase in ridership, you see your, your boardings go from six an hour to 30 an hour. 30 passenger boardings an hour is New York City. That's not Belleville, Ontario. Come on now, that, that can't be right. It, it was, uh, and luckily enough, um, Ryerson University and the University of Toronto both did studies on our on-demand service um, that, that, that backs those numbers up. These aren't uh, these aren't us inflating them, and, and it's not Pantonium trying to sell more product. These are the real deal, and, and, uh, and we got the research to, to back it up. And then lastly, I get a lot of how fast can we make this happen? Well, it, it took eight months for us to make it happen because we were a partner in building the product. Uh, On-demand service now literally can be rolled out in weeks. Once you decide how you want your stop set up, whether you go with a virtual stop, use your existing stops, go door to door, you get that put into the system, you get the mapping for your area put into the system, train your drivers, notify your public, get them ready to go, and it's literally weeks to days uh, until you can launch a service. And then once you have it, um, you can do anything you want to do with it uh, and make it work. So I've got some interesting links here. Um, both of the, uh, the reports that I mentioned um, in my presentation, the, the report from the University of Toronto uh, and the report from Ryerson can be found at these locations. Um, the University of Toronto report, there's also a YouTube video. Whoop, got, there's also a YouTube video um, where the professors at the U of T have a conversation uh, with the uh, with Pentonium to talk about the service and, uh, and the features that, uh, that we utilize. Uh, there's also a link there to the CBC News coverage uh, when we first launched our service. We launched on a Wednesday night. CBC showed up two days later on the Friday to, to do an interview and, and have a look around and see how things were going. Um, and it, uh, it, that, that interview is there. It went very, very well. And then lastly, um, a report that Pantonium completed on how we switched our entire system to on-demand uh, in Belleville within hours. Uh, to meet that, uh, the ridership needs through a pandemic. And again, I want to thank everybody very much for allowing me to be here this evening. Uh, my contact information is there. Uh, I, I realize this presentation is only truly an, an ankle deep dive into the world of on demand transit, um, but I could uh, literally go on for days to talk about it. So if there's anything that we don't get to address here this evening, uh, give me a call or drop me an email and uh, we, uh, we can definitely have a, a more in-depth discussion with specifics. Thank you very much. I will unshare my screen now and give control back. There you go. Thanks, Paul, for that presentation. Um, sir, uh, we're opening the floor for questions. There's a couple in the chat, so I'm going to go to those first. Um, Dawson has a question. Is there an increase from that nine minute average wait time during peak hours? Uh, no, I, we because we only operate it right now as an evening service, uh, we don't have that peak. Even uh, when we were running it uh, as a full regular on demand service through the, uh, through the COVID-19 shutdown, uh, I think our maximum wait time uh, stretched up to about 17 minutes. And there's a question from Scott. Um, is there a chance that at peak periods, some commuters may be left behind? Uh, some areas have very high peak traffic. Uh, initially, when we first launched, and, uh, and unfortunately, I didn't listen close enough to Pentonium, that was an issue. 
but once we corrected and, and realized what our ridership were, um, then we got it, uh, got it fixed up right away. And we've had very, very few instances of, uh, of unavailable rides because what the system does is it, it will take that booking, um, it will uh, up to four hours ahead of the service starts to schedule the system. And it will continue to schedule right up until the, that call can't be completed or can't be done. So the, the system doesn't just take a look at it and then throw it away. It's constantly looking at it, trying to fit it in to make it as efficient as possible. So it, uh, it's a very rare occurrence that it happens. Uh, if we have an evening where there's an event in town that we weren't aware of, which doesn't happen very often, or um, something, some significant event occurs where the rider ships more than we anticipate, we may get that situation, uh, but it's very rare that it's ever happened. Uh, Adam has a question. Uh, what concerns about vulnerable users that may not have uh, access to a phone or computer? So have there been any issues? Uh, when we first started to set up our service, uh, one of the concerns we had was that we wanted to be open to everybody. Uh, and we recognized the fact that not everybody had um, cell phone or data. So we still have the, the phone in option uh, where you can call during the day to, to book your ride through us. Um, we have the computer, we have the, um, the, the smartphone options. We went to some of the larger employers in the area and discussed the, the concerns with them because they wanted their employees to have the flexibility of being able to accept overtime or to, to leave early if they have to, they didn't want to be stuck there. So they actually put tablets in their um, their employee areas so that they could access the service um, outside of um, using their own personal phones. Uh, and the drivers also uh, are able to do an ad hoc pickup, which is a little bit riskier. Um, if you're in an area where there's not a lot of ridership, there's a chance the bus won't show up. But if you're in an area where we regularly see service, they got that main corridor over to the industrial park, definitely the Walmart. Um, the driver can book a passenger uh, literally in seconds as they, as they just climb on the bus. The system takes that call, puts it into the rotation, and then um, provides the drop off time so that uh, nobody gets left behind. Is there any, uh, any other questions? Uh, I can unmute people. Or you use chat. Uh, I've got a, an observation about the Guelph uh, situation. What's being proposed in Guelph is a little different because they're not, they're planning to tack this service onto the end of a, a scheduled route. So it seems to me we, we're missing some of the advantages because your your example route where there's a bunch of weights, that that's still going to occur. You only get the benefit of the on-demand part at the very end of the route. Uh, so it's just something I, I've uh, you know just noticed about the difference that of what's being proposed here in Guelph. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm not really familiar with the with the plan for Guelph. I have to, to look that up before I could really comment, but I'm not sure if uh, one of the DAG members can. Um, well, Guelph is using the uh, different um, company. They're using RIDECO technology and not uh, what Zelda is using, but they're very similar. Mm -hmm. um, and I know on the Have Your Say uh, website, there is some information there that might help. Um, and I are, they are taking questions at uh, transit at guelph.ca as well. So they are willing to listen and uh, are there help to answer questions if you have any um, for this. I do see one more question in the chat there. Um, what are you? What do you know about the new customers? How were they traveling before? Did any research indicate their demographic profile? Uh, that actually I, I can address as well. Uh, prior to our fixed rate service and our on demand, uh, the only way that those passengers were able to get around was either 
uh, taxi, friends or family or, or, or a bicycle. Uh, the Ryerson um, report does do a, no, sorry, the University of Toronto report uh, does do a, a significant um, look at uh, the, the, demographic, the demographic profile of who's, who's using on demand uh, and, and they go into how uh, the use of on demand has impacted the economic development in Belleville and uh, the ability of, of our public, arriving public to, to get out again and are uh, out now and, and utilize and explore, and explore the city. So yes, that has been, uh, has been looked at very closely. Grab that uh, U of T research and uh, it will uh, it'll cover a lot of that for you. Operator response to the change. Um, we kept the operators involved right from the very beginning, uh, right from when we agreed to, to start moving forward with Pantonium. Uh, we involved our transit uh, operators in the process, uh, recognizing that this service was going to be different than anything that they, they had ever operated before. Uh, initially, there was some concern uh, in regards to um, picking up the customers that, they're, that they get used to. Um, Belleville is still a small enough community that the drivers know just about every single person that gets on their bus. So they were worried about uh, Keith and Gail not getting their ride um, at night if they, if they don't book the bus properly or they won't get on that bus or they won't know what to do. Um, once we started running the service, um, that, that quickly went away. Once they realized that, uh, that the service was there, uh, the demand was there, and they were going to get more customers. Uh, they were happy. And some concerns, again, um, initially, when we first started to talk about this service, was that uh, we did a lot of conversations about efficiency uh, and how um, we were going to make the service better. And uh, we are unionized uh, in Belleville, it's a group. So there, of course, was a concern that efficiency means fewer, uh, the need for fewer drivers. Uh, and we, we started emphasizing from the beginning that we weren't looking to reduce our, our numbers, um, our staffing numbers. We were looking to make it as efficient as possible for the customer. Uh, and again, um, that went away very quickly when they realized that not only was the service uh, more efficient, um, there were a lot more people and, and the security was there. But we, we, we just continue to grow. Thanks, Paul. That's Jay here from the HSR in, in Hamilton. Uh, thank you for all your um, comments today. It's really, really interesting. I just wondered too if you um, did you have any response from stakeholders in the community, like those employers you talked about? Have they worked to help make this pro project a success with communicating it to their employees and that sort of thing to have a bit of skin in the game, or maybe health or educational or social institutions in the community who are trying to encourage their their folks to use the transit service more often? Uh, absolutely. We we meet um, every other month with the major employers in the industrial park uh, just to see how we can make it better um, and, and what they can do for us to, to assist in, in, uh, in making the service work for their staff. So they've actually, uh, some of the larger employers um, have taken a look at how to improve their um, employee area um, and actually have done some work with bus stops with uh, locations with um, providing the, the tablets for, for their employees to book on uh, book online from work um, and to, to work with us to to give us advance notice of shift change or growth it's, it's all kind of taken a bit of a backseat with uh, with COVID-19 uh, we still keep in touch we still know what's going on but uh, the, the regular communication is, uh, is a little bit lacking now but it's coming around again Hey Paul, it's Dennis. Hey Dennis. Um, have, have you given any thought to, to and looking at your data to see if there's potential to to move to a hybrid, like to run fixed route in a corridor to take some of the on-demand trips off? Uh, we have um, part of our late night service uh, through the industrial park in particular uh, and the, in the Walmart store. Uh, because what we are seeing there, th those are our, our higher demand uh, areas. Um, and what the on-demand um, does is that uh, it takes the calls. And, and if we have nine people booking a request for 10, 10 p.m., 
and then we have three people booking for 10, 15, um, it occasionally or can cause some issues with the service uh, with buses overlapping. Uh, but what Pantonium has introduced for us with the uh, with our on-demand, uh, and it's available everybody has Pantonium, is a graining tool. So we are looking now at setting up or or operating a fixed route service to our peak demand areas that we know we have uh, the ridership that we need. But one of our concerns was that we don't want to run a fixed route service and then have somebody book on demand um, and, and utilize two buses to do the same work. So with the, the graining tool that Pantonium has introduced, we can prevent that from happening. So now we can run that fixed route service to the peak areas that we need um, and not double up the service and, and not worry about somebody booking on demand and, and piggybacking through that area. So it absolutely is something that the technology will now allow um, and, and allow it without having uh, the duplication. Any other questions or comments? Paulus, Jay again, can you, can you comment on, you mentioned um, an advisory committee. Can you talk a little bit about who they are and did they have an input into the process at all? Uh, they absolutely did. Uh, Belleville operates a, has a, a transit advisory committee that is uh, put together by the city. It consists of three councillors um, from the city of Belleville and um, six, uh, six members of the public uh, that are regular rider users. Uh, that committee meets uh, every month uh, and they have a, a two hour or two year um, service agreement to be on the committee uh, and then they reapply to, to either carry on or to, or to be replaced. Um, now these members are, are normally regular riders of the service uh, that, to, to help us to forward it to a future planning um, where, where we need to improve, what we can do better and then anytime that we're looking at a service plan or a business plan we first run it through the transit advisory committee for their input and approval. Uh, and if we get success and approval there, then it goes to council for consideration. Uh, they're, they're always our, our first buffer before it moves forward. Well, if there's no further questions or comments, I want to thank all for joining us tonight. Um, if you are in Guelph, uh, Guelph is doing an on-demand transit on May, starting in May 2021. They are looking for input on where to put the virtual stops and uh, real stops, and that's can be found at uh, haveyoursay.guelph.ca. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us, Paul, and thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Absolutely. Thanks, Paul. Okay. Thanks for everyone. Thanks. Okay. Great.